Welcome to the SQL Ninja tutorial. SQL Ninja was written by Alberto Rivelli, also known as iSurfer. SQL Ninja is a tool targeted to exploit SQL injection vulnerabilities in a web application. The goal of SQL Ninja is to exploit SQL injection vulnerabilities on web applications that use Microsoft SQL Server as a back-end database. Microsoft SQL Server 2005, running on Windows 2003 Release 2, is the target in this tutorial. Microsoft Expressions 2 was used to create the website which has a connection to the back-end database. Through the exploit of a SQL injection, SQL Ninja will take over the system the database is hosted on. So, what exactly is a SQL injection? A SQL injection is an attack in which malicious code is inserted into strings that are later passed to an instance of SQL Server for parsing and execution. The primary form of SQL injection consists of direct insertion of code into user input variables that are concatenated with SQL commands and executed. I will now demonstrate an example of a SQL injection. Let's take for example this Human Resources website. The user is prompted to enter the last name of the employee to search. And as you can see, one record is returned. We are now going to take a behind the scenes look at the SQL Server transaction that took place when the search button was clicked. This window is a SQL Server profiler where you can trace transactions processed through the SQL Server. As you can see, the string the user typed into the search box is displayed. The entire select statement is what SQL Server parsed and executed and in return the results of the query for the user Carter were rendered. Now for the SQL injection. As stated earlier, a SQL injection is where malicious code is inserted into strings that are later passed to the SQL server for parsing and execution. We are now going to concatenate an additional string, our malicious code, to the input string of Carter. And as you can see, all the records in the table have been returned. We are now going to take another behind the scene look to see what the SQL Server is doing. Notice the string with the additional malicious code appended to the user input and SQL Server allowed it. This shows the field name, L name, is vulnerable to SQL injections. You will see in the SQL Ninja demonstration that this is the field SQL Ninja will exploit and use to take over the system. The version of SQL Ninja used in this demonstration is 0.2.6, also known as the Bunga Bunga edition. This is a version found in Backtrack 5. It is a new release and like all software will contain bugs. We are invited to report any bugs found in this new edition and I believe I found a few, which I will point out during the demonstration. The platform SQL Ninja support are Linux, FreeBSD, and the Mac OS. SQL Ninja has 12 attack modes. A few of these are used and others are mentioned. Listed are the SQL Ninja command line options, and like the attack modes, a few of these are used and others mentioned. SQL Ninja's behavior is controlled through the configuration file, which tells SQL Ninja what to attack and how. For instance, the target host, the vulnerable page, and the exploit strings are all contained in this file. SQLNinja.conf is the file we will be working with and we will now explore the contents of this file. SQL Ninja can perform an injection through three different methods, a get-based injection, a post-based injection, or a cookie-based injection. Our injection is post-based. The required elements must be contained within the HTTP request start and the HTTP request end markers. In general, the following elements must be included. The HTTP method, whether it be a GET or a POST, and in our case we are using the POST, the full URL to the resource, the HTTP version, all necessary headers, and if you are using a POST method as we are, you must skip a line and then you must enter the body of the request. 
The best strategy to capture this information is through a proxy like Burp Suite and then copy it into the configuration file. You will need to make a few changes to the copied data. You will need to add the full URL to the post method. You will need to comment out the content length as SQL Ninja will automatically add this for us. Then you need to locate the vulnerable parameter and add the character sequence which will allow SQL Ninja to perform the injection. And as you can see I had to URL encode the tick mark. SQL Ninja will automatically insert the double dashes to the end of the injection string. You also need to make sure you end this string with a semicolon and then you need to add underscore underscore SQL to inject underscore underscore. Save the configuration file and now we are ready to test our injection. Now we are ready to perform a test to see if we can inject into our vulnerable field. This is done through the test mode. This mode simply injects a wait for delay and checks whether it is successfully executed by the remote server. This mode will also tell us whether or not our configuration file is correct and that the injection is working. The dash M mode specifies the attack mode. Basically, it tells SQL Ninja what to do. Test is the attack mode. I also have open SQL Server Profiler so we can see what is going on behind the scenes. And as we can see, SQL Ninja is performing the injection and here is the wait for delay that it injected and it looks like it was successful. Now on to our next attack mode. For most people the odds of getting a successful injection the very first time are slim. At least for me they were. Before we go on to our next attack mode I want to share a few troubleshooting tips you can use. The first is the verbose mode. We type in our original attack command and we append the dash V switch. As you can see, the configuration file has been parsed in clear text so we can see what's going on. It appears this doesn't give us any useful information other than the server returned a HTTP 400 bad request error. If this doesn't help, there is another method we can use and this is the debug mode. We can run the debug on the SQLNinja.com file itself. We use the dash D for debug. And as you can see, we are hanging at the HTTP request start command line. This shows us where in the config file the problem lies. Now we can isolate our effort starting at this line. We're going to go back into the config file. and see if we can find where the error is. The debug told us that it was somewhere after this line. And it looks like the content length field wasn't commented out. Save the file. And run our injection test again. And as you can see, this fixed the problem. Our next step is to fingerprint the remote SQL server. This is accomplished through the fingerprint attack mode. You can fingerprint one item at a time or all at once. I am going to select all. This takes a while. This mode is where I see bugs in the program. I run fingerprint mode several times and get different results each time. Here we see we are running SQL Server 2005. We are SA, the XP command shell is available, and we are using Windows authentication. However, we are not. The SQL Server is using mixed authentication. And Churrasco appears to make our queries run a system. 
Tarasco is used when we are attacking a Windows 2003 system as we are by using token kidnapping to escalate us to system. It could not find the database name which it has in the past on several occasions. However, we have enough now that we can go on to our next attack mode. Our next step in the attack process is to upload Netcat to the remote system. This is done through upload. This mode uploads a binary file using only POST HTTP requests to the web server, so no FTP or TFTP connection is required. The file is uploaded into the directory specified by the server's temp variable. In this case, it is uploaded to the Windows temp directory on the remote server. We are going to select number 1 to upload nc.exe, which is netcat. As you can see, the nc.ser debug script is now being uploaded to the remote Windows server. Once it is done, the script is converted using debug. It checks to see if the file is there, and it is. Netcat is now on the remote server. The last step in the attack process is to create a shell to the server. There are several different shells that can be used to connect to the remote server. However, the only shell I was able to get to work is the ICMP shell. This gives us access to the command prompt. SQL Ninja does have a Metasploit mode where the user can have full GUI access to the server. In order for this mode to work, you must have a direct or reverse shell connection, which I was unable to get. ICMP shell will need to be uploaded to the remote server. This is done through Upload, Option 4. In order to use an ICMP shell, the box you are on must be configured to not respond to ICMP echo requests. The following command will do the trick. Now to take over the remote server. Use the default values. And as you can see, we are now on the remote system. These are the files that were uploaded through a vulnerable field in a SQL database that was wide open to SQL injection. Hopefully this tutorial provided a good overview of SQL Ninja and just how powerful it can be. As Dr. Ingebretson states, this is your you can go to jail warning. The statement SQL Ninja is not trivial to set up, they aren't kidding, just saying. I would like to thank the following people for all their help and understanding during the tedious process of getting to this point in the video.